Can you display it so I can see it? Whoa. Swipe to plan, pinch to zoom. Um, we don't, all right, I'll skip the ad. And then we will pause, pause. Re mouse. Okay, yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay, getting that all set up. Turn the camera around. And... All right. Who did the homework? Who knows that there wasn't any homework? Good. Why, um, guy next to Evan, green shirt. I can't see your name thing. Ivan, why was there no homework? Because I didn't turn the canvas site on and I didn't give it to you. But that's okay. Because I don't think I was going to give you a homework to do on Sunday. It's going to be on the coming Sunday. The camera site is now live. If we go to canvas.wpi.edu and I have class at 9 o'clock also and when I tried to show the, them that their canvas site was live I did my password wrong and it locked me out. So let's see what I got. Um, sign in. That's me, right? All right. Moment of truth. WPI password. I think I know what it is. Do you guys know what it is? Not, no, good. It was in the hidden field. <laughs> that was totally the right password. Let's try one more time. Is that my name? Since when? Never. Never before. It, they did not tell me that they changed anything. All right, next one. Next. Haha, -ha, I do know my password. I just don't know how to operate the computer. Um, what term is this? C19, right? Are you guys M1800? It's the one with the fire. Manufacturing science, prototyping, and computer controlled machining. We talked about the, um, the, what's the word there? Thing that tells you about the course, course description, right? Did I mention that it was written by a committee? Can you tell that this title was written by a committee? It doesn't actually fit in the course catalog. Like WPI's got its course catalog and they have to abbreviate it because it doesn't fit in the printed line. Um, what do you guys call this class? What do people call this class when they talk about it? M1800? Because when I was a student, we used to call it Grunge Lab. No? When I was a student, they did casting and like the casting labs. I don't know if you guys have been to a casting facility, but they're dirty. And then we used all the, the manual machine tools and there was like oils and stuff. You, you got your hands dirty when I took the class. Uh, okay, so see, Canvas site is live. There's even assignments. And you, oh, but you can't see those assignments. Let me go pretend to be you. Student view. This is even assignments. The CAM assignments are all posted. Actually, all the other assignments exist, but I need to fix the dates so that you don't think they're due last October. 
Um, so I'm going to fix all the dates on the other assignments, get those posted by the end of the day. There is a schedule. Uh, let's see, homepage. It brings you to the syllabus. Um, you'll see all the assignments down here once they're all in there. Um, but if you go down here, there's a schedule that talks about what we're going to talk about. I think I explained um, last week when we met that I have a goal of publishing an agenda for each lecture. And not only did I publish one, but I brought it with me so that periodically through the lecture I can look at it and see how far behind I am um, and decide if I'm going to catch up or postpone something. So you should be able to get access to those agendas here. They should include information like what you should do before class. Since I published this one as you were walking in the classroom, I decided you didn't have to do anything before you got to class. Um, there are going to be some things in, uh, for, uh, what's the thing, tomorrow's lecture that I want you to do before class. I want you to read a little bit. I want you to watch a couple of YouTube videos before you get to class so we'll be able to talk about the content of that stuff when you get to class. Uh, let's see, Canvas site. I'm going to start that at 02. I'm going to finish that by 010. 10. Um, agenda, Canvas site. What else on the Canvas site? Later, oops, later when we get to, uh, Doing group exercises in the uh, exit student view. You'll have a tab called groups. Maybe it's under the people tab. I don't know. You'll be able to add yourselves to a group. Um, we're going to start doing group exercises next week, I think. So don't worry about that this week. Uh, but there's group things there, discussion forum. Has anybody been to my website, professorbergstrom.com? Anybody? Nobody? You might check it out. You don't even have to be able to spell professor. Although if you can spell professor, that site works too. Um, contact. Email. If you're a WPI student in a class that I'm teaching that is currently in session, that means you guys, do not email me questions about the class. If you need to email me some personal information about you, do that. If you have a question about the class, go to the discussion forum, post a discussion, or post your thing in the appropriate discussion thread about the class. So if you have a question about the homework that's going to be due this coming Sunday, for example, you don't understand the question that's presented to you in the homework, don't email me. Post it in the discussion forum. I promise that I will read the discussion forum. I promise that Zhao Long will read the discussion forum. Mostly I promise that Zhao Long will read the discussion forum. Um, I do not promise that I will read my email. Has anybody experienced email me, emailing me before? What's the correct procedure? That, that's not an offensive procedure. The correct procedure, if you think you should have gotten an answer to the email and you didn't get it, would be to send me a text and say, hey, did you read my email? And then I'll go look for it. Or call me. But that's going to be pretty urgent. But you can send me a text. My phone number is published all over the place. You can find it. It's in that website, too. So I am not offended if you send me a text and say, hey, this is, is it Hale? This is Hale, and I sent you an email, and you didn't read it. I might text back, check the discussion forum for your answer. Because if I do notice that you've emailed me questions about the class, I'm not going to be a jerk and not answer them. But I am going to answer them in the discussion forum. And I may, at the beginning of the class, actually, I will tell you to go look at the discussion forum for your answer later in the class. I will have lost all that energy. Canvas site, it works. Um, you can also get access to, yes? Go for it. Yes. <laughs> um, sometimes we, now it's been a long time since we've done that. 
I, I used to restrict it so that people had to form a group that was within their, their lab section so that if they had free time during lab, they could work on the group work. Um, so I no longer require that. It, it might be recommended so that if you have free time during lab, you can work on the group project work so you don't have to schedule other time to work on that. Um, depending on how the labs go, um, sometimes some people end up with free time in the lab. Not too often, though, because I think we have enough work that you can keep doing that. Um, all right, so you can also go to me1800.com. Um, I will keep this uh, front page updated with what we're doing this week. Um, there'll be a link to the syllabus and stuff like that. I don't think I've made the links live for this current syllabus now. I think this link just tells you to go to Canvas and log on. If you're already logged into Canvas, it just brings you there. Um, all right, so that's, that's that stuff. Is it 10 after? Ooh, I missed it by a minute. What do we know? What do you guys know? Um, document camera. That one. Document camera. This one. Where'd the schedule go? There it is. It's not fair for me to know how long it's going to take and not you guys, right? If you see that I've gone way over one of these times, you could tell me. What do we know? Yes? So I have a quick question. It's in the syllabus. You can figure it out now that I've posted the syllabus. No. You're only going to be able to see that. What do we know? What do you guys know? Sydney, what do you know? So we knew something about making and manufacturing. And what's, what is the difference between making and manufacturing, Randy? What is the difference between making and manufacturing, Grace? It's, it's, it's almost making something with intent, right? You, it's, it's manufacturing has customers. Right? Making may have customers, but then it's manufacturing, unless they're accidental customers. Did we, did we learn anything else? That's it? Did we spend like 50 minutes together last week? Some of you have had lab already too, right? Raise your hand if you've had lab. It's like half the class. So what do we know? Somebody had their hand up for lab. Will, right? You had your hand up? Will, what do you know? Frequently, you'll start with a prototype. Yes. Sean, what do you know? Really? What do you want to know then? Sean wants to know how to make stuff. Have you ever made anything? Never. Wow. Hale. We will be using NC code. What else do you know? What's the last thing we talked about in class on Thursday? Colin. We know that the first derivative with respect to time of profit can be estimated as a term called profit rate. Right? So profit rate What's profit rate equal? Green shirt in the back. I can't see your name tag. M M I something Mitch. Michael. It was close. It was M I C. What's profit rate equal? Cost. Cost. 
That's not very well pointed at the whole screen, is it? So cost is in the equation. What else? Time is in the equation. Um, in the back, Hale? Profit rate equals value minus cost over time. All right, value minus cost over time. Why do we care? Jack, why do you care that profit rate equals value minus cost over time? Well, because I guarantee you it's going to be on the quiz. <laughs> That's one reason to care, right? Who was it that asked about grading? It was Colin, right? You asked about grading. He cares because he knows it's going to be on the quiz. What? Yeah, Steven. Right, because... Because manufacturing, by definition, and, and this class is about manufacturing, right? Manufacturing, by definition, is making stuff for customers. How do we know the customers want the stuff that we made? Charlie. Yeah. They buy it. We know for a fact that the customer wants something when they pay us money for it. And in fact, until they have paid us money for it, we might believe they want it, but we don't know, right? So the customer and, and the, the money, that is the value that we receive for the thing that we made, right? Now, does the customer value the thing that we made at the same level that we value it? Anna. Right, we hope that the customer values the stuff that we do more than we value it. Right, because if they don't value it more than we value it, then they're going to stop buying it. Right, and so I know um, who's ever bought a book. Who's ever not counting textbooks that somebody told you you must buy. Who's ever bought a book because they wanted to learn something? All right, cool. Um, Jack, what do you guess the cost of the book that you're thinking of? Maybe it's more than one, but just guess the cost on one of those books. So if, you, if you're willing to pay $10 for it, how much value do you have to get from it? At least $10 worth. Anybody else, though? So I'll pay $20, 30 $50 for a book, but oftentimes when I buy that book for $50, I'm expecting to get a million dollars worth of value out of it. Right, so, so the customer could value the thing significantly more than the, the person selling it. Now, how does the person selling it get their million dollars? They get to sell like 10,000 books, right? 10 times 10,000, is that enough? That, no, more than that. They need a better book. So you a $100 book. All right, um... What do we know? We know making and manufacturing. We know that manufacturing is making for customers. We know they're a customer when they buy our stuff. That's the value. What, uh, what goes into the cost of doing our manufacturing? This is something that we haven't talked about yet, right? Tim. Material cost. So there are... On that display, how far over this way can I write? And you can still see it. Tell me when I get there. That's the edge of the board then. And this way? I should keep it between the lines then. All right, I'll keep it, try to keep it between the lines. Um, what was my last question? Tim answered it, right? Somebody over here? What was the answer? I can figure out the question. Material. Raw materials have cost. What else has cost in manufacturing? I haven't said your name before. Oops, stop moving it. Rishi. Rishi. Labor has cost.
What else has cost? Um, it's hard to read. Just say it. I can't see it. Robert. Robert. Tools. tools have cost. What do you mean by tools? Okay, so you mean tools, broad spectrum. So you mean the hand tools that we use for assembly. You mean the machine tools that we use to spin our end mills. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep that separate from tooling. And so tools are the durable goods. Tools are things that we reuse over and over again. Tooling is consumable. We expect it to wear out. Um, so tooling is like the end mills. It's like the inserts in the lathe cutter. Yeah. I forgot your name, though. Yes. No. Niall. Uh, How can I forget Niall's name? Because I, I pronounced it so badly the first try. Uh, shipping. shipping. Because our customers don't want the stuff we made for them sitting in our warehouse. They want the stuff we made for them perhaps sitting in their warehouse, but they want it where they can use it, right? Did, did um, when you were growing up as a kid, did anybody ever tell you you can't have everything? Who, who's heard that, can't have everything? Who's heard it completed, can't have everything, where would you put it? Anna, has anybody else? Really? That was a thing when I was a kid. They always used to say, you can't have everything. Where would you put it? What's the answer? I mean, yeah, you could do that. But I just fed, said, I'm going to keep it right where it is until I need it. Then I'll go take it. All right. You can't have everything where we put it. Shipping. We want, we want the stuff to be at the customer site. What else has cost, Summer? Um, they like the Power to operate. So in manufacturing, what takes power? Tim. In the machinery, so if you're using a CNC machine, for example, that takes power. If you're using an injection molding machine, that takes power, right? Now, sometimes the power comes from electricity. Sometimes the power could come from burning a fuel. Right. Um, somebody else has their hand up back here. What what takes power in manufacturing besides the machine tools? Yeah. Go ahead. So tools, lights. What else? Hail. Yeah. So. Um, So, and, and you mean by facilities, the things that keep the employees happy to stay at the workplace, right? So, uh, so if you're a tech startup, then the ping pong tables and things like that, right? I don't, I don't think they do that as much anymore as they used to. Uh, but I have been to software companies that had basketball courts, small ones. Yeah. Tools, facilities, lights, computers. Now, we might say the computer is a tool. All right, so power. What else takes, what else adds to the cost of our manufacturing? Yeah. Time. I'm going to put time here. With an asterisk. Time is very important. But time is important because labor over time. Time is important because power over, power over time. What's that? That's a thing, isn't it? All right. <coughs> so time is important, but all these other things we can buy. We can't buy time. Um, what else has cost? The time impacts cost. Yes, Michelle. Uh, the space, like if you're renting, like we'll call that real estate. 
Maybe you know the etymology of the, of the term real estate. I want to say word, but it's more than one word, right? This is the microphone for the YouTube live, so it's not that I'm just so cool. I have to show you my earbuds. Um, anybody know the etymology of real estate? This comes from the French term, royal estate. Did you know that you don't own real estate? Government still owns it because you still have to pay them taxes. So real estate includes things like taxes, insurance, uh, mortgages that you might be paying on the on the purchase of the real estate, things like that. Um, what else has cost of manufacturing? Yeah, Steve. You might need licenses and permits. If you use certain chemicals, you have to have special permits to operate. Yeah, Hale. Training. Yeah, I'm going to separate that from labor. Anything else you can think of? Derek. Waste. I'm going to put waste up here with time. Super important. And it has a whole 10 minutes assigned to it starting at 30. Three minutes. Gwen. Marketing, sale, well, can we just group it together with the cost of sales? Yeah, sales and marketing. Um, what else? Training, marketing, sales. Return of capital you didn't build a manufacturing company by getting the machines just based on your good lucks good looks right almost every manufacturing company has an investor of some sort those investors want their money back over time so so some portion of that profit goes back to the people that own the company so in a public company they're shareholders right shareholders get dividends over time things like that a private company you still have stockholders. Yeah, hell. Return of capital. That's the money that it took to buy all the machines that enabled us to do our manufacturing. And the people that supplied that money want it back. Um, raw materials, labor, tools, tooling, permits, shipping, power, real estate, training, sales, return of capital, management. And how do we know how to make it? So R and D, sure. Closer to the part that we ship to the customer, though. So the R and D stuff might be figuring out how to make a kind of thing. But what do you got? This could be intellectual property. IP could add cost because we may not own the right to make the thing. We may be licensing the right to make the thing from the person who owns it, Tim. Uh, like failed attempts, like so failed attempts, and we're going to cover that when we talk about waste. Who wrote the NC code? The random machine tool. Now, maybe you thought that this was part of labor, but I would separate out engineering. Based on my vast experience, most of you will end up working at a manufacturing company when you grow up. At least some portion of your life, you will end up working at a manufacturing company. I asked one of my former students the other day, I said, uh, so do you guys do manufacturing? He says, well, no, I wouldn't really call it a manufacturing company. I says, well, what do you sell to the customers? Well, we sell robotic systems to the customers. I said, well, does somebody make the robotic systems? Well, yeah. I said, then you're a manufacturing company, right? If you make the robotic systems that help other people do their manufacturing, you're also a manufacturing company. Most of you will work in manufacturing throughout your life. Engineering is always a cost center at a manufacturing company. 
It is never a profit center to a manufacturing company. They will be looking to cut you because the accountants that tend to take over the management of companies, what do they like to do? Everybody wants to increase profit rate, right? What are the possible ways to increase profit rate? Cut costs or? Could increase value. People tend to overlook that one. What else could I do if I want to reduce, increase profit rate? Decrease time, right? So these are all things that are costs in manufacturing. Who has heard the term lean manufacturing? Eric. Do you know what it means? Yeah. Go for it. Minimizing waste, operating manufacturing in the most efficient way possible. Minimizing waste. Anybody else know the term lean manufacturing? Any any uh, management majors in the room? There's usually a few. Nobody? Oh, so we can we can be free and loose with our verbiage then. We don't have to use the right words anymore. No management people here to tell us we did it wrong. Uh, who's heard the term lean manufacturing before besides Derek? Just hands up, just be proud. Hands up, be proud, be proud. Otherwise, I want to make you stand up. All right, half a dozen people. If we go up here to lecture slides, and then we change the display to be PC. All right, that's pretty cool. People watching on YouTube, click on the thing, get the lecture slides open if you want to follow along. Um, Lee Manufacturing. Yeah, tent card. What is the manufacturing? So I did a Google search. I got 13, was that million? Hits of the Google search was what is the manufacturing? 13 million hits. There are five WPI classes that have lean manufacturing either in the course title or the course description. Oh, look, I even listed them. They're all management classes except for um, two ME classes here over 2,000 books and this I did this search I don't know maybe three years ago that I made this slide 2,000 books on Amazon that have that answer, purport to answer the question what is lean manufacturing if I had to recommend one read lean thinking by James Womack Daniel P Jones so lean manufacturing is you notice the course listings here at WPI are heavy on the management courses right so what does that tell you right off about lean manufacturing, at least as WPI sees it? Yeah. It's, it's a management tool, right? It's specific, well, it's got the word manufacturing in the name, right? So you would think it's specifically a management tool for managing manufacturing. Makes sense. Okay, it turns out that the lessons that we have learned in lean manufacturing are very broad and and people don't just apply it it's a set of tools it's a it's a way of thinking um, it's a, it's it's sort of a philosophy for running an operation and it's very often right now like one of the biggest places where the ideas of lean manufacturing are expanding and growing is in the healthcare industry Think about this. Operating a manufacturing company, operating a hospital. What's the value in the healthcare system? Yeah, it's, I forget your name though. Twice now, Robert, Robert, Robert. The guy whose name I can't see, his name is Robert. Yeah, sorry. That's all right, that's all right. I'm, I'm getting it. Um, Robert is in a chair no oh uh, yeah I'll, I'll get a haiku and then i'll get it but robert what's value in healthcare? Uh, people, people don't die that's yeah. valuable in healthcare, <laughs> right people don't die um is that the only value in healthcare? Uh, and i had an idea Oh, 
for those of you that didn't hear that, Anna said, we got to make sure the important people don't die. Right. And, and what do we, and is it necessarily the important people? It could be we got to make sure that the people we can save don't die. Right. And so that's a little bit different from what Anna said. But there's so one of the things that happens in healthcare is triage. If you have limited resources for saving people, you want to work on the people that you're most likely to be able to save. And so who's been in the emergency room? I once had to go with the WPI student to the emergency room and we were waiting there for her uh, for her mother to show up. And um, she says to me, she says, I'm a little bit nervous that my mother's coming because usually my dad brings me to the emergency room. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's a usually an emergency room for you? Who's been in the emergency room before? Um, so we get to the emergency room, the first person you see is the check-in desk or something like that, right? Unless you come in in an ambulance. By the way, if you want quicker service in the emergency room, go there in an ambulance. If you want slightly quicker service in the emergency room, do not walk in. Make sure that your friend goes in first, gets a wheelchair, brings it out to the car, and brings you in in the wheelchair. It doesn't matter if it's your finger that's hurt. Don't walk in. You get faster service. I've been in the emergency room before. Um, so triage nurse looks at it. Um, now, we do the safety lecture in M1800 at the end, right? But they talk about safety in lab. The half of you that have been to lab talked a little bit about safety in the lab today. Yep. Um, one of the things that's very important is fixturing your workpiece. If you fail to fixture your workpiece correctly, it will come out of the fixture due to the cutting forces. If your hands are near the spinning workpiece, because it may be still attached to the tool, remember the tool spins? If the spinning workpiece is still attached to the tool and your hands are near there, you might need to get four stitches in this thumb. Now, first reaction when you cut your thumb is what? I mean, once you're done swearing. First reaction is to go like this, right? Then you get a piece of paper towel, wrap it around your thumb. What's the next thing you do? Clean up your work area, because I don't like leaving a mess. So while sort of holding my thumb like this, clean up my work area. And this is when I was a student here at WPI. It was a drill press. Then I was like, well, I guess I'm going to need a Band-Aid. I looked. I was like, whoo, that's what tendons look like. That's when the shock started. Started getting lightheaded. Anybody had that feeling? You've been cut for a while, but it doesn't hit you until you look at it. So I went into the office. I said, Bill, I think I need to go to the hospital. He says, what's the matter? I said, I cut my thumb. Bill calls campus police. They do not want to bring me to the hospital. They want to call an ambulance. Like, I don't need an ambulance. I need stitches. I talk him into it. I don't think you could do this today. It was years ago. Talk him into it as long as somebody sits in the back of the car with me to make sure I don't pass out on the way. Got this girl that I had just started dating, asked her to sit in the back of the cop car with me to go to the hospital. Turns out it worked out because we're married now. But um, <laughs> it was, so the triage nurse looked at it and I, I did the little flexi thing and then you can see the tendons moving and everything. And she says, we're going to put you in the immediate care line. Six hours later, I got four stitches because a bus had crashed on the highway and there was many ambulances that got there before me or before they served me. All right, so um, you're supposed to stop me from getting too far off topic, though. What was, what was the lead manufacturing, hospital waste, don't let, the, don't let the important people die like me, right? Uh, but no, so, so lead manufacturing is very much applied there. The, these principles are primarily um, targeted at eliminating waste in manufacturing processes. Sometimes the waste is measured by time, right? So if by the most efficient manufacturing process, you mean the process that can make the parts the fastest, if we for just this moment define most efficient manufacturing process is the one that makes the parts the fastest, when do you want to use the most efficient process? Do you always want to make use the most efficient process necessarily? When do you need to use it, Tim? Uh, if you have a big order and you have a limited time, or if it's um, 
So, all right. So here's the thing. So you may be doing batch processing. You have an order. You're a job shop kind of an operation. And I got to make a thousand pieces, but I got to ship them on Monday. Then I might need the most um, efficient process. Say you've got, uh, say you're a manufacturer, not a job shop, and you've got a component that you make for your widget that you sell. When do you need the most efficient process? Jack, any ideas? When the customers can buy the parts faster than you can make them. So if the demand for the part is faster than you can make it, you need to make your process more efficient. If the demand for the part is not faster than you can make the parts, and you don't have anything else to do with that machine, then you don't necessarily have to concentrate on that part of it. Um, so lean manufacturing is a set of tools and principles. You're going to read about this. Um, oh, yeah. So what we call lean manufacturing was developed as, uh, as people called it the Toyota production system, TPS. Uh, it's a collection of tools. It's um, things that add value and eliminate waste. So we want to do, and, and, and when we're talking about making the speed go down, we're calling it wasted time. So that's how we get time in that equation. So we want to add value. We want to eliminate waste. So what are some wastes in manufacturing? So actually, before we move off this, of these things that we put up here, of these things that we put up here, what is the most important thing for a manufacturing company? What is the thing that if we can't, if we can't control it, if we can't do it, we will fail every time? No. I can hire an engineer that can do that. I can hire a consulting company that can do that. Yes. We could get a robot if we can't get a person. It's not the labor. Yes. The raw materials are very impactful. I would agree, if we cannot secure the raw materials to make our part, that's important, but it's not the most important. Summer. It's, it's necessary, but, but not um, the most important. Summer. Return, it's very important to the investor, but once you got the investor's money, what are they gonna do? If it's a bank, they can come padlock the door. Um, if they're on the board, they could fire you uh, but, uh, but yeah, not necessarily. Although the investor is going to be pushing this more than anything else. Yeah. You do need the power. It's required to do it, but it is not the most important thing. Cause if you don't have this other thing, you don't need the power. Yeah. You need to be able to, to do time management and things like that. Caitlin sales and marketing. If there is no customer, you're a maker, not a manufacturer. You don't need the raw materials. Unless somebody wants to buy the product. You don't need to, whatever you said, power. You don't need the power unless somebody's going to buy the product. Okay. Value. Okay, next one. All right, what are potential wastes that we, we can imagine in a manufacturing process? J TJ. Movement. You've had one of these classes before, huh? So you made your Sterling engine Y box today, right? Half of you made them yesterday and today. The other half will make them today. So in that process, we have the step of moving from the super mini mill to the VM2. Those four steps that you take moving from one machine to the other machine, total waste. They added no value to the part, right? And so Waste things are things that we do that do not add value to the part. That's the kind of movement you were talking about. Uh, if you have a part and you take it out of the fixture and flip it over, and then close the door, press the cycle start button again, that's the kind of movement you're talking about. Every time you interrupt that process and do something to it, you've added waste because that flipping it over, it may be necessary. It may be waste that you cannot eliminate, but it's still waste. Okay, so movement. What else adds waste to manufacturing processes. 
Tim. Raw material that you have to discard. Um, so like he cut off the ends and there wasn't enough left to make a part. Okay, there's that. What if you made a part that you couldn't ship to the customer? That's like raw material that you have to discard, right? It's even worse because it's processed material you have to discard. So we'll call that stuff scrap. And manufacturing companies pay attention to their scrap rate. Because if your scrap rate is too high, then you can't ship parts to customers efficiently. What else adds waste to manufacturing? What's another thing that's wasteful in a manufacturing process? Oh, Michelle. Oh, who's ever driven on the highway past the construction site? Right, we've done that, right? Who's ever seen the three guys leaning on a shovel watching the one guy with the jackhammer? Yeah? So maybe some of those three guys leaning on the shovel are waste? Who's ever been the guy on the jackhammer? You have? What are the three guys leaning on the shovel doing? Not necessarily. Not, not the one that's standing closest to you. The guy, no, the guy that's sitting in his pickup truck, drinking a cup of coffee, he's managing you, right? The guy that's got his hands in his pockets, he's managing you. The guy that's leaning on the shovel right next to you, what's he doing? Yep. Resting. He just handed you the damn jackhammer. So I did that for two summers in a row, 50-pound jackhammer. I was pretty built back then. You get pretty built with a 50-pound jackhammer working on a bridge deck, where if you jackhammer too much, it goes through the bridge deck, and you have to catch it before it falls through. So, yeah, so, uh, but what you meant was a waste of labor in that they're standing around not doing things, working inefficiently, right? So the other thing the guy with the shovel is right next to the jackhammer is doing is he's moving the little bits of rock out of the way so you can see what the next bit the jackhammer is. So he actually has a job, but he's resting, right? You didn't just do it continuously. You'd hand it off to somebody or you would take a break. Yeah, or you weren't doing it eight hours a day for seven days, or five days a week. Um, okay, movement, scrap, um, inefficient allocation of resources. Poor, that's two R's, two O's I mean poor, L-O-K-N of... So I run a small job shop. One person should be able to keep three to five spindles running at the same time, depending on the cycle time of the process. So I've, I've got one guy working. I expect him to be operating three machines. And if it's longer processes, it might be five machines that he's operating. because He's moving between the machines. So not three guys watching one machine work. We still have a minute. Don't pack up your stuff. Um, other waste in manufacturing. So I've got in the um, check back in the syllabus for the before the lecture stuff for tomorrow in about two hours. And there'll be a link to reading stuff that you should read before tomorrow. It will include reading about lead manufacturing. There is some stuff from the reading that would be on the quiz that we did not talk about in class today. But we're not going to go back and spend more time talking about that. It's very clearly defined in the reading. Do the reading before you do the quiz that's about this stuff. Yes? The one that's going to be turned on in Canvas as soon as I fix the date so that you don't think it's due back in October. No, it's not due tomorrow. In the preparatory stuff for tomorrow's lecture, I will call out all the reading. So that's where you'll find the information about the reading. Tomorrow lecture is not in this room. You guys know that, right? We're in Washburn 229. Same time, different classroom. Washburn 229.